Okay, welcome 3 a students. Welcome back to Lecture 2. Now, um, we're going to start our lecture today with looking at what we are going to cover for today's lesson. So for today, we are going to be talking about um, the log and key hypothesis. Okay, we're going to uh, explain how the log and key hypothesis helps us to understand how enzymes actually behave and work. We are also going to be talking about the first factor that and the fact that affects enzyme activity and the factor will be known as temperature <clears throat> okay so now last week all right we spoke about these two things okay so we covered this in last week's lecture on the 8th of April, we spoke about what are enzymes. We said that enzymes are number one. They are made up of proteins. Okay. They are biological catalysts. Now, why do they call, why do we call them biological? Because they are found only in living things. And why are they catalysts? Because they help to speed up chemical reactions. That means without enzymes, the chemical reactions will take a very long time to happen. And the amazing thing about enzymes is after they are able to carry out all the chemical reactions, they will remain chemically unchanged. And what does it mean to be unchanged? It means that they basically stay the same. They are not being damaged. They are not being destroyed. Their chemical structure is still the same. And that's why your enzymes can be reused or recycled. Then we also spoke about what are the properties of enzymes, right? So what do we know about enzymes? So number one, we say that we... Um, enzymes are only required in small amounts. Um, what does this mean? That means that you only need a small amount of enzymes to carry out many chemical reactions. And that is why when you take washing powder, you only need a small spoonful instead of a big pack of washing powder. Secondly, we said that um, enzymes are very specific in action. Now, what's the meaning of specific? That means that um, a protease enzyme will digest protein, but a protease enzyme will not digest starch. Okay, so only one enzyme catalyzes one reaction. That means you must have the, the enzyme must match the reaction. Okay, then we said that we will use the log and key hypothesis to help us to describe why the enzymes are specific in action. Then we mentioned that there are two factors that affect enzyme activity and these are pH and temperature. So today we are going to be talking about the log and key hypothesis as well as how temperature actually affects enzyme activity. So if you are ready, let us go. Okay, so can you please turn to page 2 at the bottom part of your notes? I think last week we spoke a lot about um, many different things, right? We actually spoke about this word which we know as uh, complementary. And I think some of you actually wrote this down in your notes. What is complementary? Okay, so complementary... They must have the same shape so we know that let's say this is an enzyme okay and we draw the enzyme like this looks like pac-man okay this is the enzyme all right this particular area here is known as your active site very good and why do we say this is the active site because this is where all the chemical reactions take place okay so we see this active site is shaped like a triangle right so if let's say you have um uh, enzyme a uh, substrate that looks like this it will not fit in okay it will not fit in because it is not the same as the shape of the active site so and a substrate that will probably fit in will be a substrate that has got a shape like this so this shape of the substrate we say that this substrate is then complementary because it has the same shape as the enzyme and when the Enzyme and the substrate combine together, it will form the ES complex. Now, what does E stand for? E stands for enzyme. Okay, and S stands for, good, I can hear some of you are saying substrate. Now, substrate is the one that combines with the enzyme. Okay, so we are, to, we are now going to look at how the log and key hypothesis will help us to explain how enzymes are actually specific. Now, you know what is a lock, right? A lock is basically that thing when you put the key in to open your door. So, we are going to now discover which one is the lock and which one is the key, right? So, um, the enzyme is actually the lock. At any time, you can always pause the video so that you can uh, complete your notes, okay? So, the enzyme is a lock. So, you can see this is the enzyme here. Why do we call it a lock? Because you don't put the lock in the 
key, right? You actually put the key inside your HDB lock. So the same thing here, this particular enzyme over here, okay, this particular enzyme over here has a small little depression. This depression or like a hole is known as the active site. So this is a lock. So can you guess what is the key? Good, the substrate is then the key. So just like every lock, one lock only has one specific key to open it. So it is the specific key or the substrate that will bind to the active site of the enzyme. And when the enzyme combines with the substrate, what do you have? You will form a enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so let me show you. So the substrate, okay, in this case here, all right, the substrate is actually the key. All right, and your enzyme is actually the lock. So when your substrate combines with your lock, what you will get is a lock and key complex. But we don't call this a lock and key complex. We call this a enzyme substrate complex. In the exam, please don't write lock and key complex. Huh? It is known as the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so let's move on. Mm. Alright, now before we move on, Miss Lee just wanted to show you that this particular area where you put the key, so you know basically your lock has a hole, right? That hole, when you put the key in, the key actually has the same shape as the lock. So just like an enzyme, this hole here on the enzyme, okay, is known as the active site. So the keyhole is known as the active site of the enzyme. And just like a keyhole that has got the same shape as the key, the active site, okay, must have the same shape as the substrate in order for an enzyme substrate complex to be formed. If the substrate doesn't have the same shape, it will not combine with the enzyme because it doesn't fit inside the shape, okay? All right, so basically just to summarize, this is probably something that you will need to know, all right? And what is that that we need to know is that only the complementary substrate can fit into the active site. And what's the meaning of complementary? That means same. That means only the same shape substrate can fit into the active site because the shape of the substrate is the same as the shape of the active site. This is called complementary. And basically, that is what the um, lock and key hypothesis is basically talking about. Okay? So the lock and key hypothesis tells you that enzymes are very specific in nature. And why are they specific? Because of the shape of the active site. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so we mentioned that the enzyme substrate complex, okay, basically once the substrate combines, once the substrate, this is the enzyme, uh, this is the enzyme, uh, this is the enzyme, okay, and this is the active site, this is the substrate. Once the substrate combines with the enzyme and forms an enzyme substrate complex, the substrate will undergo a chemical reaction. Now, the purpose of the enzyme is to allow the substrate to be turned into a product. Now, you know what is a product, right? A product is basically like the end result of a chemical reaction. So, for example, if I tell you that I want to make a chocolate cake, my ingredients will be, my reactants will be uh, uh, flour, cocoa powder, egg, butter and what is the product the product is the chocolate cake so basically at the end of the chemical reaction the enzyme will turn the substrate into a product okay and the amazing thing is the product actually has got different shape from the active site because the product is a different is a different um uh, is, is a different chemical okay from the substrate maybe you want to write that down Okay, to make this a little bit easier for you to understand. Okay, so you move down. This product, okay, is actually different from substrate. And what is it different? It's different in shape. And since it is different in shape, is it still the same shape as the active site? The answer is no. So not the same shape as active site. So since it's not the same shape as the active site, the product actually cannot stay in the active site for a long time already. So the product must actually be um, kicked out of the active site. Okay? So what do we say? We say the product is released from the active site. 
And why is that so? Miss Lee already explained to you because the product is different from the substrate. Therefore, it has a different shape than the substrate. Okay, now the amazing thing about the enzyme is that the enzyme will remain. Remember what is the definition? We say that at the end of the reaction, does the enzyme change its shape? Does it change its chemical structure? Not at all, right? So we say the enzyme remains chemically unchanged. And because the enzyme is chemically unchanged, it can combine again. So you can, you basically allow it to combine Okay, combine again with more substrate molecules because it is unchanged. So the moment it kicks out the product, the enzyme is free again to go and uh, digest another substrate. So let's look at this. Over here, you can see that a substrate has got a complementary shape to the enzyme. It will combine to form the enzyme substrate complex. And then similar to what this step is saying, the enzyme substrate complex, uh, this substrate will undergo a chemical reaction and then it will form the product. And when the product is formed, all right, what will happen is that the enzyme is not chemically changed and it's free, okay? Why is it free? Because the products are released from the active site. So you see, once the products are released from the active site, the enzyme is now free to combine with more substrate molecules again, okay? You may want to draw this if you don't have this inside your notes. So you may want to pause the lecture here. All right, so that you can take down short notes. Okay, welcome back. So you can see this inside your notes. I think you can take about maybe two minutes to have a look at this um, picture over here. I think what Miss Lee would like you to take note is the fact that you can see that the shape of the enzyme here is complementary to the shape of the active site. And that is why the substrate is able to fit into the active site and combine with the enzyme to form an ES complex. Now you will keep on hearing Miss Lee talking about the ES complex. What does E stand for? Enzyme, very good. What does S stand for? Substrate. So whenever I say ES complex, uh, it's because the substrate already combined with the enzyme. So once the ES complex is formed, the substrate will undergo a chemical reaction and then you will realize that the products will be formed and will um, be released and then the enzyme is unchanged. You see the shape of the enzyme is exactly the same. See this enzyme here after the reaction and this enzyme before the reaction is exactly the same shape. So because of that, the enzyme is able to move on, okay, and combine with another substrate to undergo the same chemical reaction again. That is why we say that enzymes can be recycled and reused over and over again because they do not change at all. They remain chemically the same. Okay, you may want to pause the video here for two minutes to have a read through the notes on page two so that we can move on to the next part, all right? Okay, welcome back. So let's just have a look at this animation. Miss Lee actually just wants to show you this. Over here, you can see that this enzyme looks like a lock, right? Because it has a keyhole here and this keyhole has got a particular shape. It has a rectangle and like a little circular shape here. So let's ex let's look at how this animation further describes the lock and key model for us. Okay, so this is the active site. This substrate doesn't have the same shape. This substrate also doesn't have the same shape. All right, so they do not combine because they are not complementary. So that's what the lock and key tells us, right? That the enzyme is the lock, okay? The enzyme is the lock and the substrate is the key. So what do you see? Next, you find a third key. Wow, the key can fit into the lock. The enzyme can fit into the lock and it forms an enzyme substrate. Now, this animation put reactant, but please, in your exam, you will actually use the word substrate because actually your substrate is the reactant that reacts to the enzyme, okay? So we will say it's an enzyme substrate complex. What happens? Okay, that you can see here a chemical reaction takes place. It forms a product and now the product will then be released from the enzyme and you see the enzyme looks exactly the same and it's now free. The active site is now free. Nothing is in the active site so it's able to combine with another substrate again. Okay. All right, so the next part of the lecture, we are going to be talking about, so we have just finished how lock and key hypothesis can be uh, explained, okay, using the fact that enzymes are the lock and the substrate is the key. 
and that um, just like every just like every substrate, okay, um, that is complementary to the shape of the active site, is because every key can only open one particular lock because the key is the same shape as the lock, the lock, the keyhole. Okay, so we're going to be talking about two keywords now as we move to the second part, which is how temperature actually affects enzyme activity. Now, these two keywords that we're going to be talking about is actually inactivation is the first one. The second one you will learn in the next slide. Okay, but um, before I actually go through this with you, I want to show you a little uh, animation over here. Okay. So um, let's just say I have 20 enzymes. Okay, let, let's make it easier. Um, 10 enzymes, okay? I'm going to have 10 enzymes and 10 substrates. All right, I'm going to put the temperature at maybe um, 10 degrees Celsius. That's very cold, right? So I'm going to show you the setup. So what are your enzymes? Your green structures here are your enzymes. Okay, let's make it lesser a bit so it's easier. Five enzymes, okay, and five substrates. Okay, and your blue circles are your substrates. Now, I want you to notice uh, how the enzymes are actually moving at low temperature. Okay, so let's watch this um, animation. Uh. Are the enzymes and the substrates moving very fast or are they moving very slow? Okay, good. Some of you are saying it's moving slowly. And you notice because it's moving slowly, does it always um, bump into the substrate successfully? Not really, right? So very similar to what you learn in chemistry. Now you learn about solid liquid gas and how particles actually, when you heat the particles, okay, um, the particles actually vibrate faster and move more quickly, right? Same thing here. Now I want you to look what happens when I increase the temperature. Okay, now I'm going to increase the temperature to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, and I'm going to start it. Now, what do you notice? You notice that the enzymes are actually moving much faster. And you notice that the red circles, which are the products, there are more and more products that are actually produced. Okay, because the enzyme can bump or collide with the substrate. So, what does it tell you? It tells you that at low temperature, the enzyme and the substrate move very slowly. Because they don't have enough energy, because temperature provides heat energy. I think I would like you to write this down on this part of your notes, okay? So you may want to take note. You may want to take note of this, huh? all right? Temperature actually gives you, you're talking about heat energy, okay? Heat energy. So when there is high temperature, or when the temperature is slightly higher, there is actually more heat. So there is actually more energy. So your enzymes move faster. And because they move faster, they are able to collide. You know what's the meaning of collide? No? Collide means uh, like this. Okay, heat into the substrate. Now, the more times they heat into the substrate, the higher chance they will be able to combine to form ES complex, thus giving you the product. Okay, so what happens at low temperature? Just now you saw what Miss Lee mentioned, right? So I'm going to use a different color pen. So what happens when temperature is low? All right, when your temperature is low, not enough. Okay, energy. So since there's not enough energy, your enzymes and your substrates, okay, they move very slowly. And since they move very slowly, Therefore, your rate of reaction, which is how fast you can um, carry out your reaction, will of course be very slow. Let's, I give you an analogy of somebody running um, uh, during winter or when the temperature is very cold. Notice when the temperature is very cold, all you want to do is just go in bed and sleep, right? You don't have enough energy to run around every day. So basically, it's the same thing. Your enzymes and your substrate need to have a temperature that's high enough to give it more energy. And with more energy, it can move faster. And once it collides more, it will be able to produce your ES complex. And once your enzyme combines with your substrate, you will be able to produce your product successfully. Okay, so this is how temperature actually affects enzyme activity. So I want you to write this down. Huh? All right. Um, if you have a lot of product form, so if there's a lot of product form, 
is because okay your enzyme is very active now the meaning of active means that the enzyme is able to combine with a lot of substrate so the activity of an enzyme means that it can combine with substrate so if it combine with substrate more that means it's more active so you have more product if it combine with substrate less that means less active less product okay you may want to pause the video here and rewind so that you can hear miss lee's explanation again all right because this is actually a very important part of the lecture okay so you may pause the video here okay so welcome back so now let me show you what happens when temperature becomes five degrees celsius okay what happens when temperature is five degrees celsius huh? now you look what happens look at the movement of the enzyme and look at the movement of the substrate they are so slow why is it so slow because we say that at low ph your enzymes are inactive now what's the meaning of inactive the word inactive huh? let's miss this first okay the word inactive means in insufficient not enough right so inactive means not active and why are they not active when somebody is very active means the person is moving very fast running from one place to another place talking a lot right so we say wow this person very active must have taken a lot of food that's why i got so much energy but look at the enzyme it is actually not active at all yes it is still carrying out a reaction because you can see your products are being formed but it is very slow okay and that's not what you want you want the activity of the enzyme to be fast so that you can get a lot of products at a very very fast rate okay so because of the very slow movement of your enzymes that's why we say that your enzymes are very inactive so how do you change the activity of the enzyme you can restore the activity of the enzyme by increasing the temperature but only increasing the temperature to a specific temperature now what is the human body temperature can some of your guess Yes, very good. 36.9 to 37 degrees Celsius, right? Now, when do you have a fever? When it's 37.5 and above. So that means uh, your enzymes in your body uh, can only perform uh, when it is at its normal body temperature. Anything higher than that, the enzyme is unable to perform. Same thing here. So the temperature must be just right. It must be at the best temperature. Okay, now look what happens. Your activity of the enzyme can be much faster when you increase your temperature because now your enzymes are moving a lot faster and therefore you can get more product form. So we say the activity can be restored. Now what is the meaning of the word restored? Restored means go back to the same. So when I say that I want to restore this chair, I want to restore my phone, that means you want to put your phone back into the original um, the or original condition so we say that the activity can be restored when the temperature or the ph increases now um i would like you to make a, a, a note here because some of you will say oh then it's very good 100 degrees celsius ah, your enzymes will be able to perform well but i ask you a question at 100 degrees celsius do you think you will still be alive the answer is no okay so therefore how much can temperature increase Okay, it can only be restored when the temperature increases to a specific temperature. Okay, and this specific temperature is um, dependent on um, the animal that you are talking about. So if you're talking about a human being, the best temperature for enzymes to work at is 37 degrees Celsius. If you're talking about a bacteria that stays in a volcano, all right, then of course the temperature for this bacteria enzyme to work very well could be 1000 degrees Celsius. But a human enzyme will not be able to work at 1000 degrees Celsius because the body temperature of the human being is 37. Okay, so you must remember that when we say that activity increases, when temperature increases, you must be very careful to pay attention, okay, to the organism. Because different organisms will have different normal okay temperature all right now inactivation just like your notes say it is not permanent what do we mean by it's not permanent you saw just now right when miss lee changed the temperature back to a higher temperature okay the reaction can be faster again so actually the enzyme is not destroyed the shape of the enzyme is not damaged that's why we say that it is not permanent all right that means if an enzyme is inactive you can make it active again by changing the temperature to a higher temperature 
all right okay so let us move on now this is the second keyword that we are going to be talking about and this keyword is known as denaturation okay this keyword is known as denaturation now at very very high temperatures we say that the enzymes will become denatured what do we mean by denatured it means that the shape of the the shape of the enzyme and the active site is changed okay let's look over here now this is the original shape of the substrate it's a hard shape and this is the shape of the active site now what happens when you heat this enzyme above 40 degrees celsius now remember uh, the human body temperature is about 36.9 to 37 degrees celsius anything that's higher than 37.7 you're already having a fever so your enzymes will not be able to function well that's why you feel very tired because your enzymes carry out a lot of chemical reactions for you now you look what happens to this enzyme when it is heated above 40 degrees celsius look at the shape of the active site now you compare this shape of the active site with this shape you can tell that it's slightly different right so if the shape of the active site is different go back to what we talked about only the substrate that has got the same shape can combine with the enzyme because the active site shape is the same now the active site shape is different already can the original substrate go back and fit inside here the answer is no because why because the shape has now changed now why has the shape changed okay miss lee is going to um explain this for you all right um even though this is not part of your syllabus but i think it's very important for you to understand now you know that actually enzymes are actually made up of protein right Okay, so this is an enzyme molecule. Enzymes are actually made up of protein. Now, protein uh, is actually very heat sensitive. Now, the meaning of heat sensitive means uh, a little bit of too much heat. Uh, wow, protein cannot take it already. Now, you know that in um, protein uh, is actually made up of all your amino acids bonded together to form your polypeptide, right? And then your polypeptides will then uh, curl and form into your protein. Alright, so now the thing about this is, which you will learn in chemistry, okay, basically these bonds here, they are very heat sensitive. So once you, pro you, you heat, that means uh, you increase uh, the heat, okay, these bonds will be broken. You will break these bonds. And if you break these bonds, can the shape of the protein be like this? Cannot, right? So I want you to go back to this example here. Inside this enzyme, there are actually many amino acids bonded together. And the way they are bonded together gives it its shape, you see. So if I break these bonds, can the shape stay the same or not? Cannot, right? For example, if I give you um, a ball of wire, I say this is the ball of wire, the shape is circle. If I take a, a scissors and I cut it up into many, many pieces, will the shape of the wire still be the same? The answer is no. So if the bonds inside your protein molecule here are broken, the shape of the enzyme will be very will be affected. And if the shape of the enzyme is affected, the substrate, the active site will not stay in this position anymore. Okay, so maybe after heat, uh, after heated, this enzyme could be like that already, you know. It loses its shape. So originally the substrate is this substrate, like a pizza shape. Now I ask you. Can the pizza shape fit inside the active site here? Cannot, right? Because the shape is different. And what is different? Is the substrate different? No, it is the active site of the enzyme that is different shape already because of too high temperature, because the bonds are already broken. This is what we mean by denaturation. Okay, so in the exam, if you say that the enzyme is denatured, you must say this point, huh? You must take a highlighter, okay, and highlight this is very important. So when you say that an enzyme is denatured, we say that the enzyme's shape, shape of active site is changed. And because it is changed, the substrate can no longer, can you guess this word? Can the substrate, can this original substrate which is here, can it go into the active site? The answer is no so we say that the active site can no longer fit into the active site of the denatured enzyme 
okay you might want to pause the video here because there are a lot of um, learning points over here that you might want to take note of okay so welcome back so we say the substrate can no longer fit into the active side of the denatured enzyme because the enzyme the active side of the enzyme the shape has already changed so the original substrate cannot fit then you may say, teacher, then you just change the shape of the substrate. Lah. But you can't do it, you see, because that is the substrate that the enzyme is supposed to break down. So you can't change the, the substrate. So what happens if the if the enzyme cannot um, combine with the substrate, can it form ES complex? No. If it cannot form ES complex, can the products be formed? Cannot, right? Because in order for the products to form, the substrate must enter the enzyme's active site click inside here then the chemical reaction can take place so what do we say about the rate of reaction now rate of reaction means how fast the products can be formed so the faster your products form means your enzymes working faster so since now your enzymes cannot work because your enzymes cannot combine with the substrate we say that the rate of reaction actually decreases okay so you see over here, when you heat, look at the shape of the enzyme, it changes, right? And look at the active side, it has also changed the shape. So or the original substrate cannot fit in inside. And if it cannot fit in, you cannot form ES complex. So you cannot form product and therefore the rate of reaction will decrease. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so I believe you have this um, in, your, in your graph, all right? Okay, so I believe you have this inside your notes. So I'm going to take you through this. I think this is found on page 4 of your notes. So can you please turn to page 4 of your notes? Alright, so let's, let's look at the graph. Okay, now in this chapter, there will be more difficult questions and you will see graphs. Now, you don't have to be afraid when you see graphs, alright, because actually it's very easy to interpret. Now, Miss Lee will promise you that I will teach you how to read the graph, but you must be very patient. So let's look at the axis of the graph here. All right, you have two axes. You have your y axis that talks about rate of reaction. Now, rate of reaction means how fast you actually produce a product. It means how fast the reaction ends. The faster the reaction ends, the faster your rate of reaction. Now, this tells you your temperature. So you will notice that temperature starts at zero. It increases by 10 to 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Now, this is the shape of the graph and we are going to interpret what this graph actually means for us. Okay, so let's have a look. Huh? So, you can see here that at the very first part of the graph, you can see that the graph is going up, right? What does the graph going up tells you? It tells you that is as you increase the temperature more and more, you can see that the rate of reaction is becoming more and more that means the, the rate of reaction is becoming faster why is it becoming faster because remember your enzymes are moving faster and since your enzymes are moving faster like vibrating faster they are able to collide with the substrate and because they can have more collisions and because they have more collisions they will then be able to form more ES complex. So I think this part you don't have inside your graph. So Miss Lee needs you to pause the video for you to write these two things down. Eh? So can you please write this down? All right. The rate of reaction is actually increasing. Okay. So this rate of reaction is actually increasing as the temperature increases to X. So you can see at this point here is the highest part of the graph. That means this part here is when the rate of reaction is the fastest. That means your products are being produced at a very fast rate. Okay, so you can see that as temperature increases from 0 to 10, rate of reaction is actually quite low. Then when the temperature increases from 10 to 20, rate of reaction is increasing. From 20 to 30, it is becoming more and more until it is at 37, about 37 degrees Celsius, then that's the highest, right? So why is that so? Because the enzymes are becoming more and more active. Now, why is it that they become more and more active? Because they are able to produce more products. Okay, you may want to pause the video to copy down these two boxes in your notes because you don't have this inside your notes. Okay, welcome back. So now we have talked about how the rate of reaction actually increases from zero all the way to this part at X, right? So therefore, you may ask me, so Miss Lee, what is happening at X? Since the rate of reaction is the highest, what does that tell me about the enzyme activity? Is it the lowest? 
or do you think it's the highest good guess some of you tell me that it's actually the highest so at x uh, we say that this is what we call optimum temperature now optimum temperature please copy down uh. so in your graph uh, you, you will need to copy down all these three boxes uh. optimum temperature means the temperature is when the enzyme is the most active and if the enzyme is the most active that means the rate of reaction is the highest you can see it is actually the highest in this graph here all right now why is the rate of reaction the highest because the most amount of products are formed so maybe here at the point here maybe only five products then maybe at this part here maybe 15 products 20 products while here can be 150 products why 150 products because your enzymes are the most active so we say your optimum temperature is the best temperature okay it's like the super best hashtag is the best temperature for enzymes to digest the substrate or to catalyze the reaction okay and for human beings this is very close to our body temperature which is 36.9 to 37 degrees celsius all right okay now the next part i want you to take note of all right is this portion over here now you can see this box over here now before we go into that i just want you to look do you notice that after you pass the optimum temperature what happens to the other graph the other part of the graph it seems to go be going in the opposite direction here is going up right going up because it tells you the rate of reaction is increasing so if this is going down what does it tell you about the rate of reaction yeah the rate of reaction is decreasing now why is the rate of reaction decreasing okay why is it decreasing now let's have a look huh? the temperature above here i see 38 39 40 50 wow which 60 is this optimum temperature for human beings? Can human beings survive at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius? No, right? If we have a fever of 40 degrees Celsius, uh, your parents will probably send you to the hospital because it is too high for you. So we will say that after the optimum temperature, the enzymes will start to denature. Now remember what is denature in your previous slide? You may want to go back and have a look. Okay, very good. I can hear some of you are actually mouthing it. Denature means that the shape of the active site has changed because the bonds in the enzyme have broken. Okay, and what does this mean? This means that your enzyme is unable to combine with the substrate to form ES complex. And so the rate of reaction is becoming lesser and lesser as your temperature increases after the optimum temperature. Now, it's very, it's very important for you to remember that you must use the word after. Okay? And so, therefore, your enzyme is denatured. You see, as it goes down, your rate of reaction decreases. And Miss Lee mentioned before, right? Rate of reaction actually is talking about products form. So, maybe you want to write this down in your notes. Okay? So, rate of reaction means products form. So, as your rate of reaction increases here, you have more products. As your rate of reaction decreases here, you will have less and less products until you look at this point. This point tells you that at 60 degrees Celsius, uh, look, the rate of reaction is zero. No, That means the enzyme is not carrying out any chemical reaction at all because the enzyme is now completely denatured. Now, let's remember uh, what is the meaning of the word denatured. It means shape change of the active site so substrate cannot combine anymore i'll just put there so substrate cannot fit into active site anymore okay now this is actually what happens all right so you can see this part here rate of reaction increasing rate of reaction being the highest here rate of reaction slowly decreasing as your temperature is becoming more and more now what is this temperature this is a keyword now this is very important now 3a2 3a1 and 3a3 students this will definitely come up for your wa3 yeah miss lee will definitely ask you this you must know that this is the optimum temperature optimum means uh, the base ideal okay super duper temperature because the enzymes are the most active rate of reaction is the highest and most products are actually being formed okay is that all right now let's move on you may want to pause the video here actually to finish copying down everything in your uh, graph you can always pause the video
okay so now let's move on now uh, miss lee is now going to uh, um go into depth as to how to explain okay how to basically explain um the graph in detail because this is a very common um, N-level exam question and they will usually ask you, oh, you know, describe the shape of the graph or they will ask you, explain why the graph looks like this or they will ask you, explain uh, what is happening in this part of the graph here. So I'm going to take you through. Uh, now you look at this part over here, look at the rate of enzyme activity. So the lower the enzyme activity, the least number of products formed, the lower the chemical reaction. So you can see here that the temperature is quite low, right? So therefore, the enzyme activity is also very low. Now, why is that so? Remember, temperature is very low. The enzymes can move very fast or move very slowly. Yeah, very slowly. So we say that at low temperatures, okay, the rate of reaction is low because your enzymes are very inactive. So you will take note now, nah, this happens when the temperature is very, very low. And this is the part here. Okay, you may pause the video to complete the blanks in your slides, or in sorry, in your notes. Alright, now you notice here, as temperature, notice what happens, ah, as your temperature becomes more and more, that means you move along this x-axis, means temperature becoming more and more, right? Look what happens to your graph, it's slowly increasing. If it's slowly increasing, means it tells you that your enzyme activity is also increasing. And enzyme activity increasing means that your enzyme can break down the substrate faster. So we say that as temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases. But you notice the rate of reaction increases only until this point here. And what is this point? This point is known as your, very good, your optimum temperature. So you can see again, Miss Lee show you up. Uh, as temperature increases, you see, this graph here is increasing all the way to this particular point. Okay, this particular point is known as your optimum temperature. Okay, this is when the rate of reaction is actually the highest. Alright, so your rate of reaction is highest. You cannot tell me as temperature increases, huh, or the, the, enzyme, the rate of reaction becoming more and more and more. Because if you're becoming more and more, then the graph will continue looking like this, right? But actually, after this point, you notice the graph decreases, right? So what does the graph decrease? That will be the next part of our notes. So you may want to pause the video here, okay, to uh, take some notes. Huh? So we revise, okay, we revise. We say that um, this optimum temperature is the temperature where the enzymes are the most active. That means the rate of reaction or the enzyme activity is the highest. Therefore, most products are formed. I would like you to actually take this down in your notes, please. Because in the end level, sometimes they can ask you one mark question. They ask you, define what is optimum temperature. Then you must tell Miss Lee, optimum temperature is the temperature where enzyme most active. So the rate of reaction is the highest. Okay, that's why a lot of the most products are actually formed. So you can see that as temperature increases, look at the red arrow your rate of reaction is becoming more and more higher and higher until this x point which is the highest and this is the optimum temperature okay now let's move on what happens all right when the temperature is too high okay so when the temperature is too high what happens okay so when temperature is too high here that means pass go past the optimum temperature so the optimum temperature here is 37 then when you go past 37 means could be 38 39 40 50 60 70 100 all the way yeah what will happen you notice that the rate of reaction look at the the red arrow the rate of reaction instead of going up which is increasing the red arrow is going down that means the rate of re the rate of enzyme activity or the rate of reaction is actually decreasing now, why is it decreasing? We say the rate of reaction becomes very, very low, lower, lower, lowest until becoming zero. Okay, because over here at this x-axis, the y-axis is actually zero. Okay, why do we say that? We say because the enzyme has been denatured. Remember, denatured means, okay, so let's, I will move myself down. Okay, denatured means over here, too much heat. The bonds inside the enzyme will be broken, so the shape of the active site 
has changed. Now, you look at this shape of the enzyme here. It's very different from the shape of the enzyme here, right? So we say that the enzyme has been denatured here, so the shape is not the same anymore. Okay, so we say the enzyme has been denatured. And what does this mean? Can you please copy this down in your notes because I'm very sure you don't have this in your notes. You will say that the shape of the active site has changed. So now the substrate cannot fit in and therefore products cannot be formed. And remember we said before, the rate of enzyme activity, uh, you can... Actually, uh, you can... What is the evidence or, or proof that an enzyme is active is when you look at the product. So more active more product. No active, no product. Very active, a lot of product. So since now your activity is decreasing, okay, since now your activity is decreasing, your rate of reaction is also decreasing, your product formation is also decreasing until it becomes zero. So that means products cannot be formed at all. Okay, you may want to pause the video here so that you can take down your notes and copy this up because Miss Lee will definitely ask you. This is a very big durian, that means a very big tip for your exam. You have to know this. This is a key term, okay, or a key concept. Okay, I just want to show you a very short animation. All right. Now, I just want to show you a very short animation to see how temperature actually affects catalase activity yeah now catalase look at the, the, the name uh, ace 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 now nah? ace actually is the enzyme so all potatoes actually contain an enzyme known as catalase okay catalase uh, will basically break down hydrogen peroxide into hydrogen and oxygen okay uh, sorry into oxygen and water so when you can see that the reaction is successful uh, is when you can see bubbles uh, because the bubbles actually mean that oxygen is being produced so the more bubbles you have that means more oxygen so more product means more active the enzyme okay so i'm just going to show you what i'm going to do i'm going to take the potato and i'm going to put it in now i'm going to collect oxygen gas i want you to take note how long it takes to collect 10 cm cube of oxygen gas huh? okay you will see that the the timer will stop here okay okay you can see oxygen bubbling because there is product formation. Now you look what happens. Okay, it is collecting 8 cm cube. Finally, 10 cm cube. It took 40 seconds to collect 10 cm cube of oxygen. Okay, now I'm going to plot this in a graph at different temperatures. So I will carry out this experiment at different temperatures. Maybe I carry out at 5, I carry out at 10, I carry out at 15, 20, 25, 30, so and so forth. Now you notice, uh, I carry out at 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, and 75. Now you look at the time taken to produce 10 cm cube of oxygen. At 15 degrees Celsius, it took 40 seconds. That's close to one minute. However, at 25 degrees Celsius, it took only 20 seconds. That means faster, right? That means uh, here take, I must wait 40 seconds to get 10 cm cube. Here I only wait how many? 20 seconds, I can get 10 cm cube. This one even better, luggy better. 35 degrees Celsius, ah, I only have to wait 5 seconds. I can get the same volume of gas. So if Miss Lee were to ask you, which temperature is the optimum temperature? Remember, ah, okay, remember, ah, optimum temperature is when the enzyme is working. So you want the temperature where the enzyme is working at the best. This is 40 seconds. This is 20 seconds, this is 5 seconds. Which one here is the shortest time? This one, right? So it tells you uh, to collect the same volume of oxygen. Actually, I only took 5 seconds. Why? Because this temperature is known as your optimum temperature. Because this is the fastest, fastest timing. So the rate of reaction, alright, is the highest or the fastest then you notice what happens at 45 go back to 20 look at what happens at 65 degrees celsius i had to wait for 120 seconds no that's actually two minutes that's very long to collect 10 cm cube now you look what happens at 75 degrees celsius i wait for so long i didn't even tell the timing because there's no gas no gas because no product why no product this is too high the temperature what has happened to the enzyme Good, I can hear. 
you said that it has become denatured because the shape of the active site has been changed. Wonderful. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so congratulations. You are now, um, we have now ended our second lecture, okay? And we are almost two-thirds way through this chapter. So actually, this chapter is not so intimidating. It's actually quite easy, but you will need to do a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, listening to the lecture and a lot of questions. So today, we talk about two things, right? We learn about the lock and key hypothesis. Okay, what is the lock and key hypothesis? Number one, we say that enzymes are specific because of the shape of the active site and only the substrates that are complementary can fit into the active site. And once the enzyme and the substrate combines, we say that it forms an enzyme-substrate complex that will allow us to produce products. Then the products will leave the active site and the enzyme is unchanged, so therefore can be reused again. We also talked about how temperature affects the enzyme activity. We talked about three types of temperature, actually. Number one, low temperature. We say when it's low temperature, the enzyme moves very slowly, so the enzyme is very inactive. The next temperature, we say that when temperature increases slowly, slowly increasing until optimum, we say the enzyme becomes more active, so the rate of reaction increases until the optimum. Now remember, optimum means best temperature, ideal super temperature that's the temperature in which the enzyme is the most active so you have the highest rate of reaction okay then the third temperature that we spoke about is when the temperature is actually too high and since the temperature is too high what will happen the enzymes will become denatured and the shape of the active site will change therefore your enzymes will become less active and your rate of reaction will decrease and slowly become zero Okay, so this is whatever that we have learned today. You can always uh, rewind the lecture and go back and listen to Miss Lee again. During our live lesson on Friday, Mr. Farid will meet 3A2, Miss Lee will meet 3A1 students and 3A3 students. We will discuss more about this if you have any questions. Alright, so congratulations to you. You have made it to the end of lecture 2. Bye-bye.